Welcome. This is what's been going on in the sun today, the 7th of April 2011. Yesterday I predicted sea flares, and my goodness, we got four of them. But unfortunately it was not from the region that I predicted, but from a new region coming over the limb, as we shall see. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions. 1183 is rotating off the disk. 1184 seems fairly stable at the moment. 1185 has had some small growth. 1186 is the newly numbered region in the east. There's another region, as we shall see in the X-ray movie, coming over the east limb. The unnumbered region that I talked about in the southwest yesterday has now rotated off the disk. There's a new region forming just south of disk center. Whether we are observing the birth of a new major region or just some transitory spots we will see in a day or two. And there is a new, very small region coming over the east limb in the south as well. So we have quite a bit of activity going on. Let's see how it develops in the SDO movies. But first, let's take a look at what's been happening to the regions that have rotated recently off the disk. To do that, we go to the Stereo A spacecraft. You can see there's not much going on in these old regions. In the white light and magnetic movies, you can see there's nothing particularly exciting going on. Just the normal coming and going of sunspots, with no particularly dramatic growth or motion of the existing spots. In Helium 304, that prominence on the southeast is still looking very ripe for eruption, and there may have been a couple of small eruptions from it already, which may be the origin of this coronal mass ejection that I will show you later. And in the X-ray movie, you can see this large region coming over the east limb. Okay, let's take a look at the Stereo B spacecraft and see what the sun should look like in about a week's time. You can see there's quite a bit of activity in the region near disk center, which is the same region that is currently coming over our east limb. So that is quite promising for the future. There doesn't seem to be much going on in the SOHO chronographs, in either the C2 or the C3 instruments. However, if we look at the Stereo A coronagraph, we can see that there's a CME heading right at us. I suspect that that originated from that prominence in the southeast. If we look at the whole sun image of the corona, we can see the large region about to rotate onto the disk. But in the meantime, we're going to lose several of our other regions. So ironically, sunspot number may drop and activity levels go up. Geomagnetic activity in the last 24 hours has been quite active. We had a couple of periods there where we were actually at storm level, albeit a low one, 6. And the KP index is varied between 1 and 6. In summary then, the sunspot number has dropped to 56. However, there are several unnumbered regions on the disk at the moment, which implies that the number should be significantly higher. The X-ray background has increased to B4. The radio sun remains relatively constant at about 109 solar flux units. The solar wind has freshened a little to nearly 540 kilometers per second and the KP index has been quite unsettled varying between quiet conditions and storm conditions in the last 24 hours. Okay, I'm going to go ahead on a bit of a limb here but I think activity is going to increase significantly over the next couple of days. The chances of getting C flares I think are quite good and the increasing chance of getting an M flare but I still think an X flare is unlikely unless we get very significant growth in one of these regions. With that polychrome filament still looking very pregnant uh, for lifting off, I think there's a good chance of a, a major CME. With that CME heading in our direction, there's a possibility of a geomagnetic storm. But the origin of the region was in the eastern half of the sun, so that's not very well connected to the Earth. So I'm taking a wait and see attitude on that one. That's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now. <laughs>